our previous lecture, I explained you the overview of the cobalt amine, the structure of cobalt amine and its different forms of cyanocobalt amine. And today, I would like to tell you what is uh, the form of distribution of cobalt amine in the body. Now, vitamin B12 is synthesized only by the microorganisms and is not present in plants. Animals obtain the vitamin from their natural bacteria flora or by eating food derived from the other animals. And cobalt amine is present in now these are the sources of you see whenever there is a vitamin and explaining its sources you have to explain two types of sources one is the animal source of of that vitamin and second is the plant source of that vitamin because some vitamins are present in the plant whereas the other vitamins And in case of vitamin B12, the animal source is the best source and it is an appreciable amount in liver, number one. In red meat is also very rich in vitamin B12. And sea fish, different type of fish. And then your egg. Definitely, when talking of egg, it is with the yolk. Because in certain cases, the people with diseases, heart diseases, they don't they take uh, the yolk or because that disturbs the cholesterol level. And, but the vitamin B12 is an appreciable amount quantity in egg yolk and all the dairy products. And similarly, there are certain cereals which are fortified in which that vitamin B12 fortified meat that has been added, that has been supplemented in that cereal. So these are the sources of the distribution of vitamin B12 in plants and animals. Now, in my, in my, this, uh, in, in this diagram, uh, now I'm going to talk about the uh, important uh, point and that point is the folate trap that sometimes there is university question regarding folate trap and how this folate trap is uh, there and what is the significance, why, why, what is the reason of this folate trap and why we call it as a folate trap. We, if you look in this diagram, in this chart, I have already mentioned in my previous lecture that at number A, that is the homocysteine, there is a conversion of uh, homocysteine into the methionine. We look at this reaction carefully. There is N-methyl tetrahydrofolate and this N-methyl tetrahydrofolate in the presence of enzymes and vitamin B12 is converted into the methionine. And in this process, tetrahydrofolate, instead of N5-methyl, it is now tetrahydrofolate is there. In the case of deficiency of vitamin B12, this reaction does not when this reaction will not proceed, the tetrahydrofolate will be and methyl tetrahydrofolate will be not converted into tetrahydrofolate and that tetrahydrofolate which will be accumulated. Because the methylated form cannot be converted directly to the form of the tetrahydrofolate. Folate, so folate is trapped in the N 
file form, which is for not converting, it is convert, it is simulated the levels of other forms decrease. Thus, cobalamine amine deficiency, which you know I can say that cobalt amine deficiency leads to a deficiency of the tetrahydrofolate form which is needed important which is needed in purine synthesis and if that crap is there that is resulting in the symptoms of the macroplastic anemia. So this is how I repeat the whole this process that if you look at the diagram A N methyl tetrahydrofolate helps the conversion of the uh, homocysteine into the methionine and the presence of vitamin B12 in case of vitamin B12 deficiency, this will be not happening. And methyl in, that is tetrahydrofolate will be not converted into the tetrahydrofolate. So that is M methyl tetrahydrofolate will be accumulated and when accumulated that is the, known as the uh, trap and uh, this trap is known as the folate trap and there will be then problems, certain problems that is leading to efficiency of the, that will be affecting the purine uh, in form and resulting in the symptoms of the megaloblastic anemia, this is how the anemia uh, is developing here. Now, going the clinical uh, clinical manifestation that uh, in adults pernicious anemia is there, vitamin B deficiency produces macrocytic anemia and uh, that is in case of the adults. Then sometimes there is also mucosal atrophy of the stomach. In addition to that, I am talking what the clinical aspects of uh, vitamin D twelve deficiency are. Number one is the in adults is pernicious anemia. Then there is mucosal atrophy of the stomach and inflammation of the tongue. Then inflammation of the mouth and pharynx. So three signs. Some patients come with these signs that uh, there is uh, inflammation of tongue, inflammation of mouth, or in parents. So that is indicating the deficiency of vitamin B12. Second, in previously I told you that uh, the absence of HCL, that is known as aflohydria, that is absence of HCL, that also not helping the absorption of the vitamin B12, aclohydria. And uh, then the generative changes of posterior and lateral columns of the spinal cord. What will happen? Resulting in the peripheral sensory disturbances, hyperactive reflexes, there will be due to this, there will be hyper at reactive reflexes, there will be ataxia, ataxia, and paralysis may be there. So, these are very dangerous signs of the um, deficiency of vitamin B12 and the clinical aspects we are talking. If we go see the hematological changes in uh, case of that in the blood picture, uh, that shows that uh, there is the macrocytic type of anemia with macroblastic erythroblast and uh, are there. Then there is thrombocytopenia is there. These are the changes which are observed in the blood picture. There are other biological changes. Clinical, I am talking now the clinical aspects of this. That is serum B12 level decrease urinary when that will be decreased, definitely because excretion is not there, so this vitamin is stored in the liver, the excretion urinary B12 level is decreased, 
there will be rise in the pH of B12 excretion and then we can there is a test also in the blood we can see the methyl malonic acid that is, is detected in the blood this is the test for the vitamin B12 deficiency C vitamin B12 deficiency we study the methyl malonic acid level and in case of vitamin B12 deficiency this methyl malonic acid is increased. Then there are certain uh, DNA synthesis is also uh, the uh, pernicious anemia and pernicious anemia DNA synthesis is in maturing red cells is depressed. Very important again is clinical effects of pain and there will be failure in conversion of the ribonucleotides to the C oxo B oxy ribonucleotides and uh, then there is juvenile pernicious anemia also that is failure to secrete interesting factors. I think when, uh, when talking about uh, this all, I told you in my previous lecture that nutrient factor is very important for the absorption, for the um, further breakdown of the uh, involvement of the vitamin B12 into the reaction. And in case that intrinsic factor is not there, this will be not absorbed, vitamin B12 will be not absorbed because the intrinsic factor is very important and that will, the intrinsic factor will be uh, in the here because the intrinsic factor you can see here that is being attached with the, first it is attached with the protein here and then while moving further that intrinsic factor in this human then join moving further and then that intrinsic factor is released and vitamin is set free to go in, uh, that is uh, into the blood and then it is stored in the liver. This is how it is absorbed. Last day I was talking of the metabolic role of the cobalt amine and in, in this very first uh, picture, what I showed you, here, what I showed you that uh, uh, there is uh, the involvement of vitamin B12 in the metabolism. Last day I gave uh, an exercise to the students asking, and that is university question, asking what is the role of vitamin B12 metabolism in students, uh, they, they, they were lying, but uh, it was just uh, not in detail the reply I received. I wanted a more detail of that, so today I decided to give you detailed involvement of the thinocobalt amine into the metabolism. First is the involvement of in the carbohydrate metabolism and other this is also so I am going to show you four different places where this mm, is going to happen. In the very first slide I told you that the L methyl polo L methyl melonyl CoA is converted to succinyl CoA. I showed you in the metabolic map and B12 is needed there. That is not present, that will be not be converted into section I O A. And uh, then there is a, a second place where in the metabolism where B12 is needed, that will be ribonucleotide is converted into C oxy ribonucleotide again vitamin B12 is needed here. This is um, this is shown in the this reaction. And third is when the erythroglycerol is converted into acetaldehyde, there is again need of vitamin B12 and if not present, this reaction will not proceed and acetaldehyde will be not formed in the metabolism. I told you to keep the metabolic map in your DNA while I talk detail that metabolic map, you can see this also in the metabolic map. 
and fourth, you communicated when converted into the uh, B methyl aspartate and then B beta methyl aspartate further converted into the nephronic acid, you also need vitamin C as well. So these are the four important reactions I am indicating, I am telling you to go through for the university question that what is the role of vitamin B12 in metabolism or in carbohydrate metabolism. If it is in carbohydrate metabolism, then it will be a different answer. If overall it is involved in this where it is needed in vitamin B12 deficiency, what will happen? That will indicated in the slide. And for this purpose, I will suggest you, I mentioned the book, uh, you better go through the chapter G, uh, page 188. It is uh, page 188, it is given, and, and uh, you can see all the slides there, what I'm, and my purpose of showing you the slides is there is, you see, I have to get you prepared for the university question. And if you understand these slides, what I have taken from the book, you will be in a very good position to answer the questions. So, my purpose here is to make you understand, to make you clear that how these happening, these changes are taking place and where these are taking place. If that will be in your mind, you will be a very easy way to answer the question. So in today's lecture, I have particularly mentioned the folate trap and I have particularly mentioned to you regarding the vitamin B12 involvement in the metabolism. Now I would again uh, go to that situation where all the vitamins you have gone through. In the book of Lippincott at the end of your chapter, there is given a complete map indicating the all the what is needed according to your flavor, the name of vitamin, its sources, its deficiency disease, namely what deficiency disease is there, and its clinical aspects are mentioned there. You must go through that chart. At the end of the chapter in Lippin Court book, detailed chart is there. We have gone through all the vitamins with you in detail individually, one by one. But in the at the end of the chart, there is at the end of the chapter there is a chart. You must see that because I'm what I'm now going to do is I'll be taking your voice also on the topic. And uh, you will be asked to come prepared and we are I'm going to have your voice questions with you so that I come to know that you are well prepared. This vitamin chapter is very important. It was very good rated, so don't miss it and prepare it accordingly as I am guiding you, as I am 